between 1 and 100. So uh, number equals 1 is not a prime, 0 is not a prime. I'm going to start at 2. While number is less than or equal to, is it less than or equal to? Do I want to go up to 100 or up to and including 100? <laughs> well, but that English language spec is ambiguous, isn't it? It could be interpreted either way. Right away we bump into one of the fundamental problems of programming is how do you write the right program if there is no such thing as right, if it's open to interpretation? Why does this matter? Well, in this case, it doesn't. 100 is not prime. But in a lot of other cases, for example, when you're sampling a signal and I say, you know, look at the first second of data, do I mean zero up to but not including the one second mark, so it's one second duration, or do I mean zero up to and including the one second mark, so it's one sample longer than one second? That's going to make a slight but measurable difference in all of your knock-on results. So first thing we have to do is get rid of the ambiguity. I'm going to say up to, but not including 100. Okay. If number is prime, print number. Okay, that program is correct. It just doesn't work yet. Okay. Everybody okay with that? So now what I have to do is go back and solve the one problem I left myself. I have done something that is so simple that I know it is going to be correct provided I solve the subproblem correctly. I've deferred one subproblem so that I've got one thought down on the page, and then I come back and I tackle any remaining, remaining subproblems. A mistake that novices make when doing intellectually challenging tasks, not just programming, is they do this. They dive down all the way to the bottom of the problem in one small place, solve that tiny sub-sub-sub-problem, and then try to come back up and solve the next one, but they've lost track of where they are. The right way to do this, again, tons of educational psychology literature to support this, is to solve problems that way. Okay? Here's my problem. I'm going to break it down into three things that are mentally at the same level. If I was explaining it to a human being, I would tell them that story. Okay? That way it's consistent in my own head. Now I come back and I treat each of those as something to be explained and I come down and I do that and I do it that way. Starting at the top and just writing the code out, indenting as you go, is much less likely to work than writing one thought and coming back and filling in the bits that you kind of fudged a little bit. Everybody okay with that? So if I, I can actually tell, not I, people who've studied this can tell how likely somebody's code is to work by looking at a video recording of them typing it in with all of the lines redacted to just be black boxes. If I see you writing the code linearly front to top to bottom, the odds of it working are much less than if I see you writing and then expanding this bit and expanding this bit and then expanding this bit and expanding this bit, right? It's a difference between writing it like that and writing it like that. Everybody okay with that mental picture? Okay, so if the number is prime, well, how do I tell if the number is prime? That's kind of what I'm trying to do here. A number is prime if it can only be divided by itself and 1. If any other number from 2 up to number evenly divides in, it's not a prime. So, 1 is, a prime. One is not a prime. 1 is not a prime number. Yep. Mathematicians mumble mumble. Mathematicians justify it after the fact to make other useful things be true, and then pretend that God made it that way. This is why I'm not a mathematician. I don't bother to justify things. I just do them. So, so let's say divisor equals two. If divisor goes into number evenly. Uh, is prime equals false. Hmm, else is prime equals true. And then if is prime. Okay, well this isn't going to work because right now I'm only testing to see whether it's divisible by two. Right? That's not a very good test for whether a number is prime. 
I should test three, four, five, six. I should test everything else. So let's write another loop, okay? While divisor is less than number. And yes, I can optimize this, but I won't do it yet. Okay. And then I need to increment my loop counter. So the idea here is I'm going to try everything from 2 up to the number. If that <laughs> goes into the number evenly, number's not prime. If it doesn't, well, we're good, right? And that is so that this loop will go up to the next number. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay? But this is wrong. Let's see what happens if number is 3. If number is 3, divisor is 2. Divisor is less than number. Good. If divisor goes evenly into number, is prime is false. Well, 2 doesn't go evenly into 3. I still don't know how I'm going to do that. I'm going to trust myself to figure that out. Okay, so if divisor goes into number evenly, is prime is false. Okay, we don't do that. Is prime is true, good. Increment divisor, divisor is 3. Well, 3 is not less than 3. We come out, good. This gives the right answer for 3. We're done. Wrong. Let's try 4. If number is 4, we start divisor at 2. Okay, does 2 go evenly into number? Yes. Is prime is false? Great. Now we come around the loop again. Divisor is less than number. Divisor is now 3. Number is 4. Divisor goes evenly into number? No. So we say that 4 is prime. Something's wrong. Okay. Got to change the logic up. Right now, what we mean is if any of the numbers, if any of the divisors go evenly into number, it's not a prime. Okay. So let's start off by saying that I hate British keyboards. Let's start off by saying, look, it's true. Okay? I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt. Until I can prove you're not a prime, I'm going to say that you're a prime. Okay? You're a prime. I'm then going to try all of these divisors. If any of them ever go evenly into number, then I'm going to set prime to false. I found at least one counterexample to show that you're not a prime. Okay? But I'm never going to reset it to true. Right? If half the numbers go into you and half don't, it's not like we take a majority vote. If anything divides evenly into you, you are not a prime. So I'm going to start by saying, yeah, you are, until I can prove otherwise. And then I look to try to prove otherwise. If I ever find something that divides into you, then you're not a prime. I've gone through that loop. Now, if you're still a prime down here, it means I never found a counterexample. Inside this loop, I tried and tried and tried to find something that would divide into you, but I failed. You must actually be a prime. Okay? We tried all of the tests. You got past them. You're a prime. Okay? Now notice, I'm not at this point thinking anymore about how I try each number in turn. I've already solved that problem. I already have a loop that will go around and check each number, right? No, nothing in this loop is incrementing number. I'm going to be checking to see if 2 is prime over and over and over again. So let's fix that. Okay. I should have done that before I started expanding this. All right. Back at the point where we only had three lines of code here, that was the time for me to look at it and say, wait a second, I'm not actually ever moving number forward. I write this, I check this, and then I go and expand the sub-idea. Because it's harder to see when I've got another 9 or 10 lines here that I wasn't moving number forward. Please. Would it not be better to just <laughs> running it all the time? So when you write at the beginning, set prime number to always be true and just check that it ran, and then you instantly yep. picked up the yep. problem. Yep, we're going to get there. But yep. you have all that normal language in there, so you can't possibly run that. Wouldn't it be better to start small and... But what would I start small with in this case? Is the, okay. number, is the number a prime? Okay. Or no, does it, no, not is the number a prime. Does it divide through, um, does something divide by something? We mm -hmm. actually started with that. Okay. Is okay. there anything... That will work as well, provided you've already got an idea in your head of where you're going with the bigger stuff. Because yeah. here's the problem. If you start down here and build around it, what happens if you've gone this far and then you discover it's not going to work? All right. Yeah. 
in general, top-down works better than bottom-up. And what you will sometimes see people do is they're presented with a programming problem. They don't know how to solve it. And they say, well, but I know, that I know how to do this bit and this bit, so I'll write those first, and then I'll fill in the hard bit in the middle. So what they're doing is they're constraining the hardest bit to fit in around the things that they know how to do. If anything, they're making their lives harder. Whereas if you solve the hardest part first and then fit all of the stuff you're comfortable with around that, then you're not going to say, now I've got a problem that's twice as big. Right? Not only do I have a hard problem, I've made it harder because I've written a thousand lines here and a thousand lines here and I really don't want to throw them away. Now I have to fit everything in.